Uh, hey guys, it's me. This is gonna be a different video than I normally make just because it's second channel I'm not putting in that much high effort because I just want to get through everything But this is me. Sorry about the weird lighting can't do much I'm in a college dorm and like there's like weird windows here I can show you like I, I did my best but like I can't make a black in here I'm also gonna take my headset off because it's already making me mad But okay, so we're gonna go through some of the code of how I did different things for the terrible mod ideas and then for the cursed Minecraft mod So terrible mod ideas. This is the main class here uh, sorry, I just woke up and I'm kind of sick. So this is the main class. Uh, we have some crash reports here, right? But um, So some of the features uh, This is all needs to be explained later when we get to the ASM um, Okay, so first thing is it loads up it registers it. Uh, we have some draw code here. What is this actually used for? Uh, oh, this makes the crosshair big. Okay, so first thing big crosshair basically what we do is we check we basically get when the game is trying to render the crosshair. So if uh, on a render game overlay event, if it's a crosshair, we stop it. If it's right before the event, because it's like a before and after thing. So if it's right before, we stop it. And we're like, okay, sick. And now we just draw our own. So I just copy pasted the code out of that. And then I made the scale. I scale by 45 times. Yeah, it was a, it was a very good, very good choice there. But that, that's how the crosshair works, uh, the jump thing was if it gets a client client chat received event so if it gets a message from chat uh that's a, that contains jump it sets jump equal to true and what does that do that basically is if it's jump it presses the space bar and then it says next tick um make it unpress it just so it only presses it for one tick so it doesn't like keep on doing because if i just set that to true it'd be like it'd be like that until you're just like done until you press it again and then another thing that we have is we basically just check if the player gets invisibility because they died and if they did we crash the game with the yeet just the description to eat and I just make a new exception just so that the thing is happy. Okay, so let's get into some of the other stuff. So we have an FML loading plugin, which is the base for all ASM stuff, all core mods. Uh, and then that calls this class transformer, which registers two, tra two of my transformers. This is like my little ASM API that I use. We used it in Frames Plus, but Frames Plus had a more involved version of it. Uh, had some more features and stuff, but this is just like the base one to use for all my mods. I'm recording, right? Yeah, sick. Um, and so the first thing is a render global transformer. We just go to the connect server event and then um, Let me pull this up actually So the FML client handler, I don't know why this didn't get renamed probably because I copy pasted it uh, And basically what this does is it passes in the object. So if we go to actually the connect to server event Where is it connect to server in FML client handler? You can see it connects with this right? Uh, connects with server data and basically what we do is before we do any processing we call we add a method that calls Where is it calls this guy here and base says apply called and if the server IP contains high pixel We set it to mineplex and the server IP contains mineplex. So you just change it to high pixel I thought this would permanently change it But I guess it just uses a clone of it or it doesn't actually save or something But I thought like every time it would like rewrite it because it'd be like oh this is now high pixel No, this is now mineplex. I don't know. I guess they just copy it or something uh, good for them, but yeah, so that's what this calls um, So this just loads that variable. It's the second one on the stack or it's the second like one in memory I don't know and it brings it brings it onto the stack and then it calls this method in this location club skier Bad mods terrible mad ideas called apply and this is a description for it Just takes one thing which is server server data and it returns a void and I don't know what this is It's like an interface thing, but uh, And then we have the creeper transformer which we change into a creeper uh, so the NCD creeper class we go into the explode method we delete everything in it and then we just um, Add our own stuff which our own hook for this is just like load the self uh, Oh So we load this object we load like the creeper cl class basically the instance of it in itself uh, and then we load um, We just call this method and then we load it again and then we make it sure it's dead or else it'll just keep on running and then we return just like some basic stuff in the creeper class just calls this with a creeper. Yep, empty the creeper. And then what this does is it um, creates a four by four thing. And if it's within four blocks, it changes it to TNT. So yeah, that just makes like a sphere of TNT basically. It's not the best because it like measures from the inside of the block instead of like if anything in the block clips like the world edit one did, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, this is basically how I made, I think all the terrible mod ideas were in here. Now let's get to the cursed mod. Uh, where is that? That's over here. Got to bring this back over here. So curse was actually 
we've been working on this for a lot longer. This is much more involved. First, this started out as a mod called Entity Sizer. So yeah, if you see Entity Sizer here, that's why uh, Asbeth was actually working on it. It was a mod commission for a YouTuber, We're not gonna say their name, but it wasn't paid. It was just like, hey, can you make this? And we're like, yeah, I think we can do that. But we, other things uh, came higher priority. Uh, so this is the main class. Again, it has some ASM hooks to do stuff. I'll get to that later. Um, so we need to, um, basically disable the forge rent forge light pipe line enabled thing basically uh forge has their own render calls and they override the vanilla ones but we want the vanilla ones just because they're much easier to work with and much easier to modify for some of the stuff we did this was just some debug uh and actually most of this mod is asm so let's get into it uh we'll get to this first so same thing here we have a class transformer and we have a bunch of different things in here um same thing we have a loading plugin as well called entity tweaker i don't know asbeth renamed it he did him okay so first thing render transformer um this is if it uh it's render living label right so this basically just overrides it just loads all the variables it passes it to our own hook oh, i'm sorry i'm yawning but um oh well he's static imports in this that's something i probably do that make my life way easier um but basically uh it just gets these fields and it passes them into name tag renderer, which we'll get to in a second. And um, basically, this just renders all of our names, and it's a lot easier to do this because we can like easily modify this stuff. So the name tags. Remember when I said I had to bring the name tags down? That was actually because I commented that out. So I had like an extra ten seconds of content. There you go. That was actually as I was doing that. The mod is actually completely done when I started recording. I just had to like comment stuff out as I did it. Um, yeah, so this was just that, uh, player render transformer, this, um, this stuff here finds the init method, so like when you create the thing, and it searches for some stuff, and if it finds it, if it finds the LDC, which is basically like, hey, take this number, take this thing, I don't know why it's not a buy push, but that's okay, oh, uh, because it's double, but, um, yeah, so we just take, we just set the shadow size to 0.25 instead of like 0.75 like or something like that. We can actually find what it is, but um, there. Let's find what let's find what the old shadow value is together. Nope, I want the actual class. Uh, it should be in the init somewhere. Shadow size 0. 0.5. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we just had to modify that, and then the pre-render callback is this, and we set the size to 0. 0.25 for up like one, because oh sorry, I got literally just woke up. It's 10:13 college has been slamming me and I have like three videos to do today but see this so um instead of being um 0.5 we want it to be 0.5 but it's 0.25 because all render all living entities are multiplied by five and then as with wrote this look at him commenting his code what a good developer um yeah so they just just scales it by this amount with this variable oh what did I break I broke something I put an e up there Render living transformer. Uh, this like checks in render living entity, finds the stuff that it needs, and then it. Um, oh, this is something that I added actually, because every when you try to scale it, it just like put half of them into the ground. So there's like this weird number in here um, <laughs> that it scales by. So I just like add it. since I'm scaling it by two, like I just like transform by that. So basically, I load zero, this number, and this. And then I invoke the transform translate call, not transform. So it like moves up by that amount. So when it renders, like people aren't in the floor. And then here we go. We uh we make a two f thing. So it's two float two as a float. Um, and then we make uh, make a variable storing it. And then we scale it three times. And then we call scale. So it just makes everything bigger. Oh, this is the block. Hold on. We're just going to do this first. Uh, default eye height, we just move it down a bit because uh, the player's half the size. Now this, this was very hard for me to make. You can just look at, this is just so messy. Okay, so let's try to get through this. So this is the block model renderer. So this is rendering blocks. Um, oh, I don't know what this is, but I guess I just didn't change the name, but... Um, I guess I just store some other value of six. I don't know. I guess I, I can't even remember doing this at this ball at VidCon. But so render. So basically, when we're doing the quads, we iterate over everything. We increase the max locals, 
And then I don't even know if this is necessary because I think it does that for us. But if it's like trying to call the vertex data, it removes that and removes the previous one. So it removes that, removes previous. Okay, you get it. Uh, and then we just add our own where we special node is next. And then we insert before the special node. Uh, we're loading this variable, which is like the whatever, like something. And then basically what we do is we load it. We load something else. We call this method. I don't know why it's like mad at me for this. Duplicate code. I don't care. Um, basically, I think that is so this calls the method. Oh, this just calls a method that returns an array. And then from there we store it, we load it again, and then we call uh, this method here. Or is it? We call this method and then we put that in. So basically what this is doing, oh, and we still have, we still have more of that. There's like other stuff we have to do it in. We have to do it in like two places for it to like work properly. So basically what that does is that calls this method with the vertex data. And what this is, is this is just a series of three? Her, no, it's like seven items. Each word has like seven items, so I iterate over all four vertices or whatever, all right? And I turn the float in bits. I basically cast it over because it's in like a different bit format for the GPU directly, as opposed to like the numbers that I want to work with in memory here. Um, so I, wow, my mouse is getting like really hot from the sun. But basically I just like change it to, I check if it's like at the top of the block, right? And then if it is, then I set like the other sides to be like not the top, right? I, I, I don't think that's clear, but basically if it's like, if, if, if the edge of the block is at the top, I just like set it to be the center of the block, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, right? So the, if the, basically if the, if the Y of the block is like at the top, then I set the X and the Z to be 0 0.5. And then same thing, if it's halfway through the block, I still do that. Just, that's how I did it. And that takes all the corners and instead of being at the sides, it like points them into the center because it forces the X and Z locations to be like right there in the center. Um, so yeah, I think that's me talking. You guys have questions about how I did stuff, comments. I'm not sure these are gonna be open source cause like just they're not, but you can you can look at the code and I think I've gone to like every class here and like scrolled through it. So if you really wanna copy it or like see how we did something, you can. Um, that's been this video. Thanks for watching. Time to go record the autocorrect mod release, which hopefully goes up today in less than four hours. Let's do it. Bye guys.